Good morning and welcome to Remote Worship for United Churches of Durham, Connecticut for Sunday, January 31st, 2021. Today is the fourth Sunday in the season of Epiphany and the last Sunday of January. Perhaps the way most of us will mark this particular Sunday, it, it is the Sunday after we found out that Pastor Jeanette will be returning in March but then leaving after Easter to take care of her family. I know that there are lots of questions, many of which have yet to be answered. What is for certain is people are working and talking together and things will be moving forward. May these be days where we offer grace, compassion, and trust to one another as we face the future. Next Sunday is a Communion Sunday. We will share the meal together by Zoom. Uh, that link will be coming in the MailChimp. We will meet at 1030 next Sunday morning and share a time of prayer, observe communion, and have another virtual coffee hour. Please reach out if you need help learning how to Zoom or figuring out how to get into the meeting. We want as many people as possible to be a part of the time together. As always, please contact the office if you need help or pastoral care. You can also reach out to me at miltybc at aol.com. Let us now begin our worship together with our call to worship. Come, let us worship. Let us bring all our joys and sorrows, for Christ will offer hope. Come, let us worship, trusting the power of God through Jesus Christ to bring us healing. Come, let us worship, opening our hearts to the presence of God that we might learn new ways to live. Amen. As is our custom, we begin our worship with our prayer of confession. Will you join me, please? O oh God, who is the source of life and grace, we are aware that we are at times prisoners of fear and habit. We know that we miss the movement of your spirit because we are accustomed to life as it is. Through the healing touch of Christ, set us free to live and to love that we may be the people you have created us to be. My siblings in Christ, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ, whether things we have done, left undone, or had done to us. Let us open our hearts to receive the forgiveness that has already been offered. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from the first chapter of Mark, as it has been for the last few weeks, this time verses 21 through 28. I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Jesus and his followers went into Capernaum. Immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and started teaching. The people were amazed by his teaching, for he was teaching, with, teaching them with authority, not like the legal experts. Suddenly, there in the synagogue, a person with an unclean spirit screamed, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One from God. Silence, Jesus said, speaking harshly to the unclean spirit. Come out of him. The unclean spirit shook him and screamed and came out. Everyone was shaken and questioned among themselves. What's this? A new teaching with authority? He even commands unclean spirits, and they obey him. Right away, news spread about him throughout the entire region of Galilee. May God grant us wisdom and understanding of this passage. One of my favorite songwriters is Guy Clark. He told stories in his songs that make, made you feel like you, he knew your story too. The first song of his that I ever learned to play and sing, and the song I will sing this morning after the sermon, is called Come From the Heart. The chorus says, 
You got to sing like you don't need the money. Love like you'll never get hurt. Dance like there's nobody watching. It's got to come from the heart if you want it to work. I thought of that song as I read the passage and saw the way people responded when Jesus stood to teach in the synagogue. Mark says they were amazed because he taught with authority, not like the regular teachers. The statement says more about Jesus than it does about the people who usually spoke and taught. What I hear is that Jesus taught from the heart and that it wasn't what people were used to hearing. I remind you that even though we are through the first month of 2021, we're still in the first chapter of Mark's gospel. So, so far, Mark has covered John the Baptist, Jesus' baptism, Jesus' time in the wilderness, John's arrest, Jesus calling his disciples, and now his teaching in the synagogue and healing of this man with an unclean spirit. And we still have a few verses to go to finish chapter one. Next week, we'll hear the story of Jesus healing a woman who was almost dead. We most often look at these stories, particularly in sermons, one at a time. But I think it matters that we look at the big picture also. Mark, as we've said, is painting with a big brush. He's not so concerned with, concerned with particular details in fact, we've talked about his missing details and that that's where our sacred imagination comes in. That's where we begin to flesh it out. So we don't know what Jesus said in the synagogue, only how the people responded to it. And in the middle of their astonishment, a man with an unclean spirit stood up and said, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One from God. We don't really know what Mark meant by unclean spirit. The word in Greek that's used is shows up a number of times in the New Testament, and it doesn't get translated consistently. It means different things in different places. But the man was troubled or agitated in some way that was out of his control. In the middle of all that was going on, I wonder, though, if those in the room who were, among, who were astonished resonated with his first question. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? I mean, in a way, the troubled man's words say something that kind of sums up the point Mark has been making in his gospel so far. I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. And in the way that Mark describes Jesus speaking and teaching by heart, he lets us know that Jesus knew that too as he began his ministry. What, what Jesus knew God intended for his life, though, and what people expected of him were quite often not the same thing. And that's a big part of the story that unfolds in the rest of Mark, as well as in the other Gospels. And it affects even the way we read the stories now. As we stand alongside of those in the synagogue listening both to Jesus and the anguished man, we're offered a chance to relearn an important lesson of life and faith. And often, what first catches our attention may not be at the heart of what is happening. Over the years, most sermons I've heard on this passage have focused on that statement that Jesus wasn't like the regular teachers. Some even implying that, that Jesus' point was to criticize them. But 
It's the people who make the comparison, not Jesus. Mark is saying something larger than that first impression. When Jesus came into Galilee after John's arrest, and perhaps because of it, Mark recorded what Jesus said we talked about last week. He called the people to change their hearts and minds and trust the good news. Who knows how long he did that before people started to listen. A sense of time is one of the details Mark consistently leaves out other than to use the word immediately over and over. Last week we talked about that he didn't magically call Peter and Andrew and James and John, that that he built relationships with them that set set the stage for him for that for him to drop by and call them and for them to drop what they were doing and trust the good news. They trusted him. Now, even though this is the first chapter of Mark's gospel, Mark doesn't make any claim that this was the first time Jesus spoke in the synagogue. Only that when he started talking, people starting started listening in ways they had not. We don't know what he talked about, but there was something in the way that he said it. Like, like he knew he was telling the truth. Then the man with the unclean spirit stood up in, in a sort of Robin Williams and the Fisher King, if you remember that movie, kind of a seemingly delusional, but spot on profound kind of way, named what was going on. And once again, without much detail, Mark just says, Jesus cast the spirit out of the man. And the people latched on to something other than what Jesus was really about. A new teaching with authority. He has control over unclean spirits. Tucked into the word authority is the word author. And the root of the word author means one who causes to grow or an originator. Jesus wasn't trying to make a name for himself. I think that's why often he told those he healed not to tell anyone. He came following in the steps of the prophets to proclaim liberty and hope and love. When Jesus taught, people heard new possibilities in the scriptures. They heard invitations to live in a way that comes from the heart, to grow, to risk, to fail, to become. Whatever the regular teachers were saying, it didn't invite their listeners to the kind of expansive sense of God or themselves that Jesus offered. Change your hearts and minds and trust the good news. You can kind of almost hear him singing, right? You got to sing like you don't need the money, love like you'll never get hurt, dance like there's nobody watching. It's going to come from the heart if you want it to work. This congregation faces big changes in the week to come, alongside of all that is already going on around us. As we look into that uncertainty, I'm reminded of the words of Rebecca Solnit, one of my favorite writers, who says that you need uncertainty to have hope because it creates the possibility that anything could happen. Maybe that's why those teachers didn't grab the people week after week, because the people didn't come expecting anything uncertain. Hope isn't the easy road. It's a little wild-eyed, like the man in the synagogue. Hope is willing to take a step beyond astonishment and ask, 
What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? And then sit still long enough to hear the answer. Change your hearts and minds and trust the good news. We are surrounded by things that have been around a long, long time. And yet, we don't know all that the days ahead will bring. We do know we belong to a God who will be with us every step of the way. We do know we belong to a God who loves us and who calls us to live into the fullness of that love. May we sing and love and dance like we trust the God who loves us so. Amen. together now in our prayers of the people followed by the Lord's Prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come this morning with heavy hearts as we begin to come to terms with the reality that Pastor Jeanette's time here will be ending in the spring. Between now and then, we have important work to do and things that need to be said. Give us the grace to share our grief with one another to deep, deepen our compassion as we deal with it in unique ways, foster our hope as we look to the future. We also remember friends and family who are struggling because of COVID and its after effects, as well as those dealing with illnesses and injuries. We offer thanks for the things that foster joy in our lives. Help us to foster joy in one another. All these things we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray 
Our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We close our service this morning with our offering. Some of you will mail it in a monetary gift to the church at 228 Main Street in Durham. Others will contribute online or through the Tithely app. Those details are in the description on this link or on the church website. As we think about our financial gifts, let us remember that we offer our lives, our time, our energy, our expertise, our passions, our abilities, our attention, and our money. Let us pray together. God of hope and possibility, we offer these gifts as tokens of our lives. Work in us and through us, we pray, that your generosity might be contagious in our community and our world. Amen. And now, my friends, go in peace. Go in grace. Trust in the arms that will hold you. Go in peace. Go in grace. Trust God's love. Amen.